Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and today I have my plan to pan for 2024. I have picked out 24 items in my collection and these are items that I want to work on next year and I want to use to completion. I am hoping that by the end of the year I will have my 23 products done that I challenged myself for in 2023 and I've been tracking that in a 20 in 2023 project that I update quarterly and then also my year-long project pan. I will make sure to link both of those playlists down below so that if you need to catch up on all the progress that I have made this year, you can check in the description box. But I'm going to do the same thing with this project next year. So every quarter I will update you guys on how I am doing with my 24 items. Of course, a lot of these will be rolled into my project pans, into my deck of panning. Um, so you'll see the usage on a lot of these, but there are going to be some products that I'm going to be using in the background that of course I will update quarterly. But Without any more rambling, let me go ahead and get into my 24 products. So product number one is the e.l.f. Poreless Primer, and this is just a mini. I do have larger pores on the side of my nose, so typically I get a mini-sized pore primer just to press into that particular area. I did purchase this in November of 2022, so I made this much progress on it. Let me take my binder clip off, and I'll have some B-roll coming up that I filmed the other day in front of my Christmas tree. So we are finally in the Christmas season, which is very exciting, but that is all that I've been able to use up in a year, and mainly because this product would not work with some of my other primers, it would pill up. So I need to find a way to make this work. This is not my favorite. Um, I panned the NYX one last year and I would prefer that one, but I was trying to look for something a little bit different. So I picked up this one, but this is product number one that I want to focus on using up next year. But then another primer that I want to focus on next year is the Hard Candy Sheer MB Hydrating Primer. So this is the makeup grip. This is kind of a dupe for the milk makeup. It's kind of that green gel color. This is currently in my project pan, but I had mentioned in another video, it was my last Get Ready With Me, which I will link up in the eye. Um, I mentioned in that video that I feel like this primer is not reacting well with the current foundation that I'm panning. And so a little bit of a spoiler for my project pan, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to end up rolling this one out because I can't be focused on a product that doesn't work with my foundation. So this will probably get rolled out of my regular project pan. So you guys won't see me start to work on this until probably springtime when my foundation is used up. But this is something that I want to get rolled out of my collection. I did just purchase this in August of 2023, so this is not old by any means. But I think that I will have to wait on this one a little bit. But this is a primer that I want to focus on getting out of my collection. Now we're going to roll into the foundations. So the foundation that I'm panning currently is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. And so this is the more radiant or dewy variety of this. They do have a, a matte variety as well. And just for FYI, if anybody else is my complexion, I do have this in 150 lace. And this is a little bit dark for my winter complexion, but I make it work by bronzing up some things. But this is probably more of a summer shade for me. I would probably go down to... Was my last one that I got like 120? That's probably my winter shade, but so far I am really, really loving this foundation. My mark is up here because I did roll this into my project pan recently. Um, basically, November is the first month that I have been using this product. So this will definitely be rolling into 2024 with me. So this is going to be my focus foundation for the foreseeable future. 
but hopefully I will be able to get this used up maybe by February or March of next year. I'm gonna do these next two products together just because I plan to mix them. And so I do have the Misha Perfect Cover BB Cream in number 21 or shade 21. And then I have the Juvia's Place, what is this actually called? I Am Magic Natural Radiant Foundation and I have it in Cairo. So I picked this up to try to be a replacement for the IT Cosmetics CC Cream. And last year I used up the Misha and the IT Cosmetics CC Cream together. So that's what I want to do with this. Um, I've heard that this is a rather full coverage foundation. So kind of being able to add some moisture or add some kind of like dew back into it, I wanna mix it with the BB Cream. So these are going to be used up together, hopefully starting again once I use up the Shiseido foundation. This is going to be my next combo that I will roll in. And these are the only three foundations in my collection. So my goal, of course, use this one up in the springtime, use this through summer. And then I know in like August or September, Sephora has a sale on foundations. So I will pick up a new foundation um, at the end of next summer, but hopefully these two will get me through the summer of next year. But these are on my list to pan completely. So adding into my foundations and my mixer is the e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. And this is in light peach. What is this in? It says shade one fair, but on the website, I swore that the shade was actually light peach, but either way, editing Aaron hopefully is putting some stuff at the bottom of the screen, but this one is, I basically do two dips into this. I mix it in with my foundation every single day. Um, check back on my project pan to see if I used up my other one of these. But basically, I love this product. I love that it adds a little bit of glow to my usually like flat and matte foundations. And so this is something that I want to track and get um, basically finished it up next year. And I know that it that is feasible because I know how long it takes to, to finish one of these. Puppy is walking under the tripod. All right, he's gonna go lay down. Good boy. Also, if you're new here, um, we have a little guy that actually in a couple days he will be three months old. So I'll try to link whatever video I showed him to you guys. I'll link it up in the eye. Um, he had an intermission where he came and I held him up. But he has gained so much weight. He is like 31 pounds now and three months old. So he's going to be a big boy. But moving on to my next item that I want to use up in 2024 and that is my Bobbi Brown corrector stick. Bobbi Brown was running a sale through Black Friday and they kind of had this listed under like last chance products, like they are going to discontinue this. And I didn't pick it up because I still have a lot of this. I know that I can always pick up another corrector. Like I didn't want to have the scarcity mindset and pick another one up, even though they had it marked down by like 30%. But if they discontinue the stick, I'm gonna be so upset. This is so much better than using the pot. You actually get more product for the same price. And so this is something that I use every day underneath my under eyes. So I love this and I hope that Bobbi Brown is not discontinuing this product. The next item that I want to use up next year, I actually don't have yet. I am purchasing it in a couple days when Sephora does their 20% off, like the one-time code that you can use. And I'll pop up a picture of what I'm talking about, but I am going to get the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. I did pan one of those earlier this year, and so I'm picking up basically a replacement of that. I do struggle with hormonal acne, and it's not rosacea, but a lot of flushing on my cheeks and so I do like having a more full coverage um, concealer for when I'm having active breakouts or even things that are healing. That product was a godsend and I've missed it ever since I used it up. So I'm taking the opportunity to purchase a new one with 20% off. And so that will be coming into my collection and then that will be a focus to use up next year. 
This next one might be a little bit boring, but for me, I'm just interested in it. So this is the Benefit Give Me Brow um, Volume Pencil. So let me open the packaging. I did get it in the shade 3.75, which is warm, medium brown. So this is what the product looks like, and hopefully my B-roll will give you guys a little bit more of a close-up. But it is a sharpenable pencil and it has a spoolie on the other side. So I went ahead and purchased this during brow days, uh, which was like, it's usually the first or second of October of every year. Uh, Sephora and Ulta had discounts on brows, so I picked up all of my brow products for the next year. But my holy grail is the ABH pencil that looks like this that you sharpen, and I know that it takes me eight months to use that one up. I wanted to try this out just because I'm curious about it and it apparently has fibers and all sorts of stuff, whatever the claims are. But just for my own curiosity, once I'm done with my uh, current ABH brow pencil that I'm using, I want to see how long it takes to use this up. I want to see if this goes faster than my ABH so that in the future, whenever I'm purchasing my brow products for the year, is this going to be my new holy grail? So this one I am definitely curious about. This next one is a little bit of a twofer, and that is because I am rolling in my Juvia's Place Bronzer Duo. And you can see on the inside of this that I pulled the pans out. So this is considered two separate products in my collection because the pans fit perfectly inside the Makeup Geek Compacts. So I do have the more light and cooler one and then the little more deeper and warm one. So my goal is to use the light one during the spring and then switch over to the deep one during the summer. And then if I haven't finished this one up, I'll switch back over to this one in the fall and winter. But my goal is to use up both of these pans of bronzer. Let me see how much actually is in here. Oh, it has white printing on a pale box. What are they doing to us with old eyesight? So the total weight between the two pans is 13.02, so we'll call it 13 grams. So what, 7.5 grams each? I, I'm, I'm going to try, but that is my goal, is to use up both pans of these bronzers through the next year. I did purchase this combo in 2021 I don't know what I was thinking, the fact that I wanted to bring two bronzers into my collection, but I think a lot of people were raving about this formula, and I did end up getting it on a discount. Juvia's Place usually goes on sale from time to time. Um, on Ulta, it's actually on sale right now through Ulta's like holiday savings that was after Black Friday. Um, so Juvia's Place is on sale right now, but pretty much everything that I'm picking up from Juvia's Place, I am getting on a discount. So. Those are two that I would be very, very happy if I was able to get those used up. So that was one bin down, and now we are switching over to the other one. And I'm still on bronzers here. So this is my Soul Body and ColourPop Bronzing Balm. This is currently in my deck of panning for a usage. And I do have pan on this one here. This is, I think, the third one that I've been able to pan over the last couple years. Dogs are on the move. Make sure they don't knock over tripods. You good, buddy? Go lay down. Good boy. Had an intermission because Mr. Malcolm wanted some love. So I got pan on this. I, I'm i hoping, no, I'll be able to, this will roll into 2024 with me, but this will be a product that will definitely be used up in the first half of the year even probably the first quarter of the year. So this is a little bit of a gimme product, but it is the only cream bronzer that I keep in my collection. And so I am always interested in how long it takes me to use these up. This is such a good deal because what, 30 grams of product comes in this? 31, 31 grams of product. ColourPop is having a sale right now and it took everything in me not to purchase another one 
because I know that I will need to purchase another one probably in January sometimes, but I know that ColourPop always runs sales and really retail, like no discounts. This is $15 and I get a whole year's worth of use out of it, so I'm not worried about the cost of this one, but I'm gonna be tracking this one with you guys for this project and I might be rolling this into my project pan, um, but you will definitely be seeing this one as an empty in 2024 have to get a sip of coffee even though it is it is 5 15 at night it is already dark outside oh puppy yawns if you get if you guys heard that which you probably did puppy yawns but I have the Tennessee mug today oh he is so sleepy they have been having so much fun running around outside because the weather has been cool and I am more than happy to let them run and play to their heart's content our next item, we're moving on to blushes. So I did repress this. If you've been watching my project pans, this will look, look a little bit different, but this is my uh, Benefit Dallas blush. Um, my pan was getting rather large in the middle, so I decided to repress it the other day. And especially because for this video, I kind of wanted to be like, okay, this is where we're starting. <laughs> but this is the oldest blush in my collection. I've had it since 2017, so this is the original formula. I love this blush, but it definitely needs to go. Um, I'm currently having a goal of using it 10 times per month. I'll probably continue to do that through the first part of the year. Or I might set this aside and then roll this back in for the summer because this more, like, bronzy type of blush. I do like this a lot more during the summer and fall. So this might take a break, um, but definitely I'm going to return back to this one in 2024 and hopefully this will be a blush empty for next year. But the blush that I will probably work on starting in the new year is another one that I have repressed, but this is Did you guys just see that? I'm gonna probably leave that in because it just crumbled. So hopefully y'all get a, got a good look at it because I'm going to have to repress this and I'm just going to leave it just like that on my desk. But this is Ofra Chiclet. And I repressed this, I mixed the two colors together because I didn't like the colors separate. And so this is the product and I love, love this blush. I love the color when you get to mix both powders together, repress them together. I love this, but let me put this behind me before I spill it all over my floor. All right, I have some repressing in my future, but um, my goal is to use that blush up altogether. There is still a lot of blush in that compact, so I don't know if that one will actually be able to be met as a goal, but hey, I already got major pan on it. I've repressed it a couple times already, so that is something that I definitely want to focus my attention on. And then we are going to look at, I love to franken my blushes, and I also love to take my lipsticks that I have used up and use them as blushes. And so I did a franken blush that I want to focus on in 2024. So this here is a e.l.f. compact that is actually a duo. And so I have two of my Franken blushes in here. This shade here is the ColourPop blush stick in Pretty Thing. So this is technically what is rolled into my project, but it is pressed into that other pan and I did go ahead and I scooped everything out of this component. So this component is empty. Let me roll that back down and put this to the side. But this one over here is remnants of my Virgo Moon um, lipstick from ColourPop, and that one is mixed with some other stuff to create that blush, and then this one is a lot of the ColourPop pretty thing blush. So my goal is to work on this compact in 2024. If I do end up hitting pan or using a lot of this blush up, I do have more of the pretty thing um, in another compact that I can add back into this. 
but really my focus is going to be on this cream blush duo and just to get use out of it. But these two shades will also go really well with the Dallas and also with the Chiclet blush. And so I think that these will pair really, really well together. So I'm excited about using this and panning that product as well. I am crossing my fingers that I'll be able to use up my Fenty highlighter that I have repressed into my Tarte Compact, but I think I'll have a little bit left, but my goal for 2024 is I have my next oldest Fenty highlighter, and this is in Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal, and I already do have some nice pans on this. So this has been loved, this has been used, but my goal is going to probably be the same thing. I will probably end up repressing this into my Tarte palette just so I can get my brush in there better. These pans are relatively small, but also I like to be able to have the full Tarte palette open and kind of mix and match if I'm looking to kind of warm up a shade or cool down a shade a little bit. Even though these are pretty cool um, highlighters here, but I love the... And not only that, but I love the sparkly formula, but I don't really love the kind of like less sparkly formula. So I would even be content mixing these together and just using this as a highlight all together in one. But this is going to be my goal for 2024. This is going to be my focus highlighter. My Marc Jacobs lipstick in Infamous is going to roll into 2024 with me. I am having still a hard time kind of reaching for this. So I don't know if I'm going to have this it, like as my main focus in my project. I think I'll just kind of have it as like in the background. I'll make sure to use it and I'll update in this project how I'm doing. So I'm still going to track on my panning journal what I'm doing with this. But this is just a kind of ready rose color. I'm really horrible at describing colors. And so that is how much of this I have left. I actually have done a good job so far this year working on this lipstick and I'm actually really excited about this being a blush once it is done and I can even use this as a blush right now usually when it's still in the stick component I just rub the stick on my hand and then pick it up with my sponge from there but this is going to roll into 2024 absolutely and this is going to be a focus item and then I do have another lipstick that I want to focus on and this one has some stuff on it. <laughs> Let me rub that off. But this is one of the Hourglass Confession lipsticks and I got this in a FabFitFun. When was this? In November of last year. So I've used this a couple times but I haven't like set to work on it. But this is actually very 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 similar to the Marc Jacobs shade. Let me actually swatch these two. But this is in the shade If Only, and the wonderful thing about that, I think whenever they made these, they were naming them after kind of like hit songs, and so, but let me turn this around. So this one is the Hourglass, this one is the Marc Jacobs, so you guys can see they're very, very similar shades, but If Only is a Hanson song, and I loved it. Hanson growing up. I had their posters all over my wall from the teen magazines. I've actually seen them in concert twice, once whenever I was 13 and once whenever I was 15. And so I love, <laughs> love this. After I'm done with this, let me, let me mute my computer before all my emails come in. But once I'm done with this, I mean, I'll probably end up keeping the packaging. Number one, because you can actually reuse the packaging on these hourglass lipsticks, but it just, something about this is sentimental. When I saw this pop up on FabFitFun for a selection, and I saw that they did have the If Only shade available, I was like, absolutely, add that to my box. I want it. <laughs> so this is very sentimental to me just for the name of the product, which bless marketing. They, they know how to get to us. But this is, there's not a whole lot of product in here. These are very slim lipsticks. And let me roll it all the way up. That's all that's in there. Can we see? That is all that's in there. So this should not be famous last words. 
but this should not be difficult for me to work on and get through. This might even be a lipstick that I can throw in my purse and just have this be my lipstick on the go. Man, this is lip heavy over here. I'm gonna be ambitious for next year, but I am going to roll in my Summer Fridays, what is this, Lip Butter Balm, and this is in Vanilla Beige. Where do they have the shades on here? Yes, this is Vanilla Beige. This is like the one that was a hit with everybody, but this came in a FabFitFun in August of this year, and so I've already been able to use quite a bit of it. I do use this every day, like I put it on before I do my makeup and actually I put this on throughout the day because it's so comfortable, but I want this to be a focus product for me to use up. And same thing with Puppy on the Move. Same thing with this Sephora gloss. I did just pick this up during the VIB sale when they had 30% off. It's this very nice kind of dusty shade. Let me swatch that one. So that is that shade of that gloss. And can I actually do a swatch of the Butter Bomb? Well, does it even show up as anything? It kind of turns out to be clear on my lip shade, but that is the Butter Bomb right there. Look how juicy that looks. But so the gloss and the Butter Bomb are also on my list to pan. And with that, I'm gonna roll in my ColourPop Lippy Stick and this is in Oh Snap, and the tip of it is broken off inside the cap. That's always fun. And now it's on my brand new carpet. Let me pick that up. So this was on my floor with all the dog hair, so I'm gonna swatch this, but then I'm not gonna put this tip back in. I'm gonna set it right there so I can throw it away. So that's the one thing about the ColourPop pencils is that they do have a tendency to break. I only picked this one up in October of 2022, so this is just a year old. Again, I don't need to pick up any more until I get down with this one because I know that it takes me about seven months to use these up, but that is the shade of Oh Snap. And I am hoping to use up my other ColourPop lippy pencil by the end of the year. So this will be my main focus for my lip pencils. But this is the last lip pencil I have in my collection. So if I do want to continue to have lip pencils, I will have to pick some up next year. I already do have um, one or two projected to pick up from ColourPop whenever they're having a sale. But this is going to be my focus. I do already have my little black line on there from panning other ColourPop pencils, typically the product stops right about there. So that's where I know where my line is. So if anybody ever wants to know, it's right where the L is in ColourPop. That's when you know you're gonna use up your pencil. Three more items. All right, we are gonna look at um, a, a couple eyeliners, two eyeliners. So this one is a Makeup Geek just nude liner. This came free whenever I purchased the empty palettes. They threw two eyeliners in. Now with this one, I cannot roll it up all the way because this one is also breaking. It's broke off at the bottom. So anytime that I push it up or, or twist it up, I have to push it back down with my finger. So I leave it just kind of up a little bit. But let me see, it is just a nude shade right there. I do use this in my lower waterline just to kind of brighten up eye looks. I do really enjoy this and I like this. Of course, I'm, I can't roll it up all the way, so when it's out, it's out. I'll probably end up weighing this one, but this is something that is not hard for me to reach for, but I do want to kind of have it as a focus to use it up, mainly because the product is broken and I just want to kind of get it out of my collection and bring in another inner rim highlighting shade that is uh, not gonna break on me. The next eyeliner pencil that I want to focus on is one from Urban Decay, and this is Vice. So this is a purple shade, and this one is older, and it is kind of coming out of the packaging. So this is why I wanted to focus on this one, because it is starting to come out. So it's just this beautiful dark purple. It does have some shimmer in the formula, but that shimmer doesn't really translate onto the eyes. But I did want to go ahead and focus on this. These take a while to use up. And so 
I, I want to kind of make it intentionally in my head that I'm going to pan this so that I do reach for it. Even if I'm using this to do my tight line because it's dark enough to really add that kind of definition on the tight line or again buffing it into my outer crease. And this will also make a lot of sense when I show you what palette I'm going to focus on for next year. But beyond this one, this was item number 23, the last item that I want to work on is my NYX Glitter Glue. And I mean, we're getting down there, but this takes forever. It'll probably still take me six months to use up that amount of product. So just for reference, I opened this and started using it on August 1st of 2022 and I still have that much left <laughs> so you need the littlest amount of this I do have oily lids so I use this every single day for my shimmers and of course I use my binder clip so it doesn't fill back up with air I try really hard to get as much air out of there as possible but this is going strong I use it every day, but I do want to track it and just kind of be mindful of when this is done because I purchased another um, eyelid primer. I purchased the Milani one last year when I finished up the other one without thinking that it was going to take me over a year to use up the paint pot. So again, I want to just realistically know how long it takes me to use one of these up. So I'm not purchasing backups before I actually need them. So I don't have a backup sitting there for a year waiting for me to be done. But this is item number 24. This is something that definitely will be gone next year, but I just want to see how long it takes me. But these are my items that I want to use up next year. And let me show you the palette that I want to focus on. I think, hold on, I have, I feel like I have a dog hair stuck in my foundation. If anybody else has German Shepherds or long haired dogs and you get a hair stuck into your skincare or to, on your foundation and you like, you don't notice it until you do your whole face, like you probably get my pain where you just feel like something is under there but you can't scratch. <laughs> you probably know what I'm talking about. But the palette that I want to focus on, I spoiled this a little bit, I think, in another video I was talking about palettes, but this is the ColourPop It's My Pleasure. This palette I purchased back in 2019, so this is a little bit old, but this is what my palette is looking like. So it has been loved, it has been used. Um, I actually had a goal last year on um, fan fiction during... Uh, deck of panning I rolled that in I think for like 30 uses and so like there's barely a dip with 30 uses so I know that ColourPop shades take a long time but I hope that by using this palette I will also get lots of use on my eyeliner so just like um, I did for my pan that palette this year my goal is not to completely use up the shades but my goal is to hit Hand on all of them and to get as much use as I can out of them. I am still bringing back my No Pan Left Behind for next year. So I feel like if I, especially for a ColourPop palette, if I did, like if I was trying to finish these shades, I would get no use on my other palettes because these are so hard to hit pan on and so hard to use up that my goal is just to focus on this so that I can retire this palette. Um, I made a comparison in another video that the Cosmic Brushes Gothic palette it kind of felt like a more mature updated version of It's My Pleasure and I do have that palette and I just use that in my get ready with me so of course again I'll link it up and down and everywhere so that you guys can see that palette in action but definitely that feels like a little bit more of a mature version of this and I've mentioned in the past too that my favorite shade in here is Earthshine but the formula of the like single pan of Earthshine is nothing compared to this. And so I'm, I'm scared that if I repurchase this palette, if I buy it again just to have an updated version, that the Earthshine will not live up to this one. So I'm okay with retiring this palette once I can hit pan in every shade. So that will be my focus for next year.
All right, so those are my 24 items plus my palette that I want to focus on in 2024. I am very optimistic and hopeful that I will be able to use all of them up. Make sure to stay tuned for my update for my 23 and 2023 to see if I was able to meet all of my goals this year. Also follow along with my project pans, my no pan left behind, my deck of panning, because of course you'll see a lot of these items pop up and I don't want you guys to miss the beautiful panning footage that is coming your way. But now I want to encourage you guys to do all the things. Go ahead and thumbs up this video. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know, are you doing a 24 in 2024? I like, even if you want to reduce that, you know, 10 items, roll in, you know, skincare or body care if you want to kind of focus on those areas. I even considered rolling in a fragrance, but the this project, I really want it to strictly be my makeup collection. But and I think I talked about this in a couple other videos, but it took a while for me to pull these 24 items because I was really scraping to say, what do I have left in my collection? Do I have 24 things that I'm actually going to go through that are feasible because I've gotten my inventory down to a very manageable level, which one of you asked if I do inventories. Absolutely. I have a mid-year inventory and of course I am going to do an end of the year inventory where I will go over all of my products with pictures and spreadsheets. I'll tell you what my difference is in my numbers, how I did if a certain category went up or down. All of that will be coming in December. I have a lot of wrap-ups, a lot of finales, a lot of things to share with you guys. So I hope that you subscribe. I hope you guys stick around. I really do appreciate you and I love our conversations that we are having in the comment section. I love that you guys are keeping me up to date about your spending and your projects and your inventories. I love that we have developed a community here to be supportive of one another and you guys have made that possible. So thank you so, so much for being here. I really do appreciate all of you and I hope you have a beautiful day. I will catch you in my next one.